So now what we want to do is take a look at this beautiful tree that's been created by one of our students, Abby, and see what we can do to give it give our file a little bit more like a look of it like this. With leaves, the tree has been duplicated here, it's been duplicated here, and we are now have an eagle flying in. So let's begin. The first thing we want to do is we want to take a look at our tree in the layers palette, which is here, and we want to copy it so that we can do a moved copy of it. So here we have it. We're going to unlock this, get the move tool, and move it around and see if there's another place where it might be interesting. One of the things you might want to try, let me go to view, screen mode, full screen mode with menu bar. One of the things that you might want to try is make it smaller. One of the visual cues of distance is size. So the first thing we're going to do is edit, free transform, hold shift when you go to the corner to constrain the proportions of the tree. And then if you like, you can pull it up without holding shift and do this and then hit return so that we can move it back over here. Now, what we probably want to do is hide it behind this rock here. And one of the things that we can do, if we like the position of this tree, and by the way, let's drag it down underneath this in the layers palette so that it looks like it's behind. One of the things that we can do here is we can bring down the opacity of the tree like this so that we can see where the rock is. Later on, we'll bring this opacity slider up. So once we've done this, and we're on an unlocked layer now of the tree, we go over and get our, mark, our polygonal lasso tool, make sure it's set on zero feather, and come in and go along where you can see the edge of the rock. And then you can go further out from the tree just to make sure you're getting everything. And there it is. Now, just hit the delete key, and then go select deselect and it looks like the trees behind the rock now and all we have to do is bring up the opacity slider here in the layers palette and now the tree really looks like it's behind this rock. The next thing I want to do is I want to show you how to bring ground say rock up over this tree so that it looks like it's really here. So that said this is not the tree we want this is the tree we want right here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get on that layer and then we're going to click the new layer button right above it and then we're going to call this ro um, rock, R-O-C-K, return. So what we're going to do is create rock up on this layer so that it looks like it's in front of the tree. Now we have to use a tool over here that we haven't used yet. It's called the clone stamp tool. And we'll be changing some of these things, especially the size of it. But in the meantime, how do we use it? Well, we go down to the layer where the rock is, which is right here. And we copy that layer, so we've got a backup copy of it, and unlock it. And then we take the tool here, and we pick, we go down onto the rock, and this is how it works you hit Alt, press down on the mouse key, release the mouse, and then let go of Alt. The next thing you want to do is go up onto the layer that says Rock, and then drop some of the rock there so that it looks like the rock is in front of the tree. That's one of the ways that you can actually make this tree look like it's really part of the environment. Now, what you don't want to do is use this same tool over here because it's too light. So I'm going to give you another trick now. If you go down to the tree layer, which is this tree, and you bring unlock it so you can see what you're doing and bring the opacity of it down a little bit, right like that, you can see the rock underneath it. I'm just going to lock this tree layer for the time being so that I don't... Um, Whoop. 
I didn't want that. Lock it so that I, I can see what's going on. Now, here's what I want to do. I'm going to go back down to this layer. I've got my clone stamp chosen. I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger, right like this, just a little bit bigger, test it out, and come into this rock area here. Remember, I'm on the layer where the rocks really are, and what I do is I hold down Option-Alt, then I click with a mouse, then I let go of Option-Alt, and I then go up onto the rock layer, and I put some of this up in front of the tree, and then I go back up to the tree layer, which is right here, unlock it, and bring the opacity up, so now I can see how, if I like this rock layer or not. Now, what I'm going to do now, if I don't actually like it too much, is get the eraser and get a hard edge. Make sure you have a very, very hard brush. Keep it up here. And then come in and just smooth out the rock that you put on there and see if you like that. If you do, lock it and go File Save. And then those are a few of the things that you can do for that. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to show you about putting leaves on the tree. So you're going to make a lot of layers for your leaves so because they're going to be different sizes and the light's going to fall on them differently. So this is what I do. I go to where the tree is, right here. Make sure it's all locked. Make sure everything is locked. And this is the tree layer right here. I get on it, and then I make a new layer above it, and I call this tree one, and then hit return. I make another one, and I'm just going to call this one two. Oh, actually, I don't want to call this tree one. I want to call it leaf one. Sorry. L-E-A-F one, return. Then I make a new layer, and I double click that and I call it number two, meaning I'll know it's, and then hit return. Make a new layer, call this one number three, hit your return key. Make another layer. You should have about ten layers at least. So I'll just show you the basic technique so that you can do it yourself. Alright, so here's how you do it. Go down onto leaf one and make sure you have colors over in the toolbar here that are good colors that you've picked from your image. If you're not sure how to do that, use your eyedropper, come in and go down into these areas, and there's some, you might want to start more towards that color. Say OK. Then flip this. Here we have our eyedropper tool again, and come down and maybe get maybe this color right here. And so What's this one? Maybe we'll make this one a little more yellow. Now you can change these later, but here are two colors. So how do we make the leaves? We go onto the layer, leaf one, we get the paintbrush, and with this paintbrush we go up here to the paintbrush settings, and right here, instead of picking these circles, we go down until we find the leaf. And this will be the size the size is whatever it is that you determine it will be. So I'm on the leaf layer, I've picked the leaf brush, I've got my colors, let's give it a shot. Whoop, edit undo. The problem with that is the opacity is too low, we've got to bring it down, I mean up to 100%. Alright, there we go. So let's try a few of them. Not bad. Go up onto the next layer, and add some more, but before you do, change the size of it so you get different sizes. On this layer we'll go like that. So let's go up onto three and let's flip the colors so that we get more of one color than another. And on this layer we'll do more. Maybe a few more at that. Now what you can do with these layers is you can, once you get them, some layers started, you can get on a layer and copy it. And then on this one get your move tool and move it around. 
One of the things that happens when kids do leaves is that they, I'm going to go up to four now and put some up here so you'll know what I mean, is they make it round like a lollipop tree. And what you want to do is let some of these leaves go off the top. So what I'm going to do is come like this and just let them disappear off the edge of the picture. And that always helps. Now, if you're working down in this area here, I'm going to make another layer, call it five, because we know we're doing numbered layers or leaves. I'm going to make this one much smaller so that the leaves look further away. And you can see how this is really starting to look like these are further away. So what can you do now? You can actually, I'm going to go on the three layer, let's see where that is there, and play with the blending modes here. I might try multiply to see how this looks. And as you can see, these things will change the look of your leaves, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You just have to give it a try. And sometimes you just aren't liking it at all. So what I suggest you do is just give it a try and keep working. So that's the end.